you see. To the untrained eye, it's a curiosity of color. It's like the dark side of a rainbow melted into the ocean. But the seasoned fishing captain, who lives and dies by the winds and the tides, sees something else. He sees opportunity. Wind, current, and color crash together. The perfect conditions for tailing sailfish in the heart of the Florida Keys. That is a giant sailfish. Oh my God. Oh, we're on fire right now. <laughs> There's nothing I'd rather do than find tailing sailfish. That is a legitimate river monster. It is one of the largest migrations of bait on planet Earth. just done something the first time ever in the world. of current, a few dashes of color, all mixed together in a January cold brew. Captain Sam Milazzo knows the recipe for tailing sailfish, but it's a special that's only cooked up on rare occasions. And it actually is a phenomenon. All the pieces have to be perfect for it to really be good. You know, sometimes you'll get a little shot of it, you'll see a few fish. But when it's really good, everything has to be perfect. You know, you have to have the current, lots of current. The wind has to be out of the right direction. You have to have enough wind. It used to have to be the right time of year. Now it seems like it can happen any time of year, but the fish have to be there. I've seen great, you know, conditions where just there's no fish or not many fish. There's a lot that has to come together for that to happen. It really is a phenomenon. And when you see it firsthand, just how quickly it changes, you can watch the water change right before your eyes, where the green and the blue will blend a little bit, and it can be marbly, and all the water's mixed together in some spots, and it's rare. This phenomenon takes place in Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys. It's four islands that total 20 miles in length, and in some spots, it's only 150 feet wide. Isla Mirada is the Swiss Army key. There's a different fishery for damn near every depth. Bonefish in a couple of feet of water, swordfish in a couple of thousand feet, and a couple of dozen other species somewhere in between. Why do sailfish, you know, get up on top and surf over the current? I think partly when they're down deep, they're trying to swim into that current and it probably wears them out. I think when they come to the top, you know, they can surf over top of the current. It's kind of like sticking your hand out a car window when you're going down the road. If you angle it up just a little bit, it's like a windsock. There's so much current, we're talking six knots of current, it just pushes them to the top. Look 
take off your port side. Yeah, there, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, there he goes. Light leaders. Watch that rod tip. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. Woo. Nice. Up next, Sam and his son and mate Tyler chase color and current to find the sails. The Atlantic is doing its best impression of the child's watercolor painting. The right mix of green, blue, and purple is key to successful winter sail fishing. If you're looking for tailing sailfish, first thing you're gonna to wanna to find is the current edge. A lot of times that's indicated by different colors of water. Most of the time you have a green, kind of like a backcountry or bay color, a gulf color. And then there can be a real pretty, like a baby blue, powdery color water in the middle, and then you'll have your offshore, that deep purple water. Those are the type of things you're looking for, a color change, and it gets a lot rougher. You can actually see the current. The current's going into the wind, and so it stacks up. You have two major conditions colliding. That energy has to go somewhere, and it makes the waves sharp. It's like surf on a beach. That kind of condition will collect things out of the ocean. When it comes to bait, there are several options, each with their pros and cons. There's a lot of different types of bait you can use for sailfish. The values are real plentiful. So that's kind of a staple for what we do as far as the sailfish goes. But you have cigar minnows, pilchards, thread fins. There's just a lot of different baits that you can use. We were using values and cigar minnows. They love those values, but a value is a longer bait and it jumps out of the water. So when the fish comes to eat the bait, bad things can happen where he'll swipe at the bait and he actually gets the line instead of the bait and he freaks out. The smaller baits like cigar minnows, those baits are like little morsels. They don't have to chase them around very hard. They just eat them. They slurp them. They're like little bite-sized baits. So when you get a bite on that, it's a real clean bite usually. So your hookup ratio is very, very high with the smaller baits. He's got a sail on. Pretty fish. So cool, dude. Dude, that's awesome. Such a sick jump. Hey, Cawfish leaders in the school. Nice job. Good job, buddy. That was fun. That was awesome. Sight fishing is difficult enough. When the species you're chasing moves at 70 miles per hour, well, that only complicates matters.
If you've driven in the fast lane on a major highway, then you've traveled at the speed of sailfish, one of the fastest animals on Earth. Because Sam is sight fishing, he must react quickly. Oh, I see him way back. Here he comes. Let it go way back, guys. Here he comes. He's way back. Look at me. Look at where I'm pointing. He's right here. He's coming on that left one. See him? Yeah, I see him. He's still coming. He's coming to eat somebody. He's definitely coming to eat you. He's only, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. There's two of them. There's more fish. There's a bunch of little ones. There's at least two more. I just caught a glimpse, dude. I mean, like a little piece of color. It was not much. Sailfish tend to be the angler's gateway drug to billfish. They're more widespread and accessible than any other billfish species. While Atlantic sails are caught as far north as New York, Florida and the Keys offer the most consistent action. Leader, there he is. Little guy. Look at the colors on that sucker. Thank you. Nice job. There's a, a current edge. There's a lot of east current. It's going up into the wind, the opposite way the wind's coming. And it just pushes the sails. And instead of swimming into that current, they kind of get up on top of the current, surf down the waves. So there's a few fish tailing, what we call tailing. We call it that because their tail literally comes out of the water. It's all, you know, sight fishing. So we're just kind of putting a couple baits out and it worked out so far. But as the sun comes up, I think we're going to start seeing more and more fish up on the surface. You just say it, let it go, let it go. Get that other line out of there, wine, Tyler, Line's you're up. on. Keep it tight. Dude, I saw that thing a mile away, bro. <laughs> like an Oreo and a glass of milk. <laughs> Pretty fish. Nice job, Tyler. Yeah. You know, like when they get that color, that tail, that powdery water color. I, there's nothing I'd rather do, and I do mean nothing. Dude, it's awful. I would rather do than to look than, than find tailing sailfish. They're just beautiful, man. They just they're very graceful. Get one more jump out of them here. Perfect. Nice job. Go find another one. I think the current's helping them, you know, they get down in that current. Look at that wave. Oh That's a real one. God. It's called fish. He's a swiping. See you, buddy. Thank you. These sailfish likely traveled from South America or Mexico or the Caribbean to be here with us today. It's the latest stop on their endless migration. And how appropriate. After all, January is all about new beginnings.
In winter, when ballyhoo are a plenty in the Florida Keys, sailfish will corral them in as little as 10 feet of water, which creates a baitfish fireworks display. While it's an incredible sight, it's not uncommon. But sight fishing for sailfish in a tide-eyed ocean is a rarity. Finding the right spot in big water can be challenging, but Sam knows to follow the reef. The reef runs for hundreds of miles in each direction, all the way down past Key West into the Tortugas. That's one aspect, and then you have the offshore fishing. So there's a lot to do, and that's all intertwined this time of year. You got wrecks that are a little deeper and even out to the humps and, you know, six, 700 feet of water. Just on this current edge, color change, there's a little strip of weed in it. And these sails are just kind of swimming down this edge. There's a lot of northeast current and uh, not much wind today. These fish are just, it's real slicked out. You know, the water's real calm. So they're just kind of milling around. And we're just going to stay tight to this weed, see if we can pick a couple off. It's starting to happen, dude. I think we're gonna, I think it's gonna go off. Close or no? Uh, no. Put a little heat on, man, I don't know. I already did. Okay, we'll go easy then, don't worry about it. We're in trouble. <laughs> Let me see your spool, Tyler. God, they're mean. If yours comes up, we're gonna try to get them. I just don't have enough line, I don't think, to do it. I lost mine. God. That is a giant sailfish, dude. Look how big that fish is. Oh my gosh. No wonder we got dumped. Look at that thing. That is a giant sailfish. Dude, that was some winding right there. Uh, you think? <laughs> there he goes. Oh! <laughs> Boat beside us is like, wham, wham. A little heat on him now, a little bit. Give him the jump. There he goes. Woo oh! -ho! There he goes. Oh! Let go! <laughs> oh, here he comes! Dude, the sail up, that was sweet. That water is just like cobalt blue, man. There he goes. He goes. Oh! Hey, Brandon, if you want to just hold this rod so I can lead him up. See you later, dude. Nice. It's been a good trip by any measure. But it's not just about the fishing, but where the fishing takes you. Nineteen release flags is quite a sight, but so is a kaleidoscopic sea.